Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week I'm taking a close look at the fantastic new Ultra CLX from BSA Guns. But first up, I'm back out on my squirrel feeders. Right, I'm out on the squirrels again this afternoon and I'm targeting them at a feeding station that I've had going for a few weeks. Now that's not particularly unusual but I'm expecting this to be a pretty good session. Now I've shot this feeder once already and it produced a pretty good tally but the peanuts are still going down very quickly so I'm convinced that there are still plenty of squirrels around. Now there are numerous reasons for controlling the squirrels in these woods. Um, the area is managed for conservation, so firstly keeping their numbers down reduces their impact on vulnerable wildlife, but also they're causing a heck of a lot of damage to the trees here. The gun I'm using today is the Walther RM8UC. Uh, this is 177 calibre sub 12 foot pounds, which is perfect for this kind of shooting. Now, apart from being very accurate, it's also relatively affordable and built to take a few knocks. So it really is a great little workhorse. Now I've paired that with an MTC Mamba light scope, which is a really nice little all-rounder for general air gun shooting. And as ever, that's held on with sports match scope mounts. So that's the kit. Let's get into the hide and see if we can shoot a few squirrels. I've already done the groundwork to get the squirrels coming to this feeder and the result is that it doesn't take long for the first greedy rodent to show up and tuck in. Wow. Didn't have to wait very long for that one. And I'm not at all surprised because the squirrels are absolutely loving these peanuts now. I don't want to talk too much now that we're in the hide, but just a quick word about the hide site. It's mostly bright at the moment, although there are a few clouds scudding over occasionally. Um, but because I've built the hide under a really dense yew tree, I am more or less in the shade here. I've got a decent backdrop behind me too, so I'm fairly well out of sight when those squirrels do arrive. Very soon after the first squirrel of the session, another bushy tail clambers down from the treetops to raid the feeder. There's another one. And for a moment there, I thought it was going to be stuck on top of the feeder, but it did eventually twitch off. Um, the feeding station is just over 20 metres from where I'm sat in the hide here, which is pretty much perfect for smacking squirrels over with a setup like this. Hopefully, we'll get a few more. didn't even get a peanut. Uh, it was keeping pretty much dead still where it was so I just walloped it off, didn't hang around. It's 
great to be able to watch jays feeding like that. Now, I do occasionally shoot them because they can cause the same sort of problems as magpies, but there aren't a great deal here, so they're not really having much of an impact on the songbirds. Therefore, the owner doesn't want them controlled, and I can completely understand that. We may be leaving the jays today, but there are plenty of squirrels around and this invasive species is always on the hit list. Another good one there, and it looked to me as if that one still had the peanut in its mouth when it hit the deck. There's no such thing as a free meal round here, I'm afraid. You do have to be prepared for some long waits with this sort of ambush, but the shots are coming pretty frequently today. And another one. Well, the sun's swung around now, so the feeder's actually in the shade. Um, and strangely, it's actually giving me a sharper sight picture with less glare. Not that you'll be able to see because the battery's actually gone on the GoPro now, so hopefully Nicky managed to get a reasonably good shot of that one through the other camera. Another one there, and it actually looked for a moment like we were going to have another one stuck on top of the feeder, but again, it did roll off. Um, it's been a great session, but I am going to wrap it up now. We've been in the hide a long time, and quite frankly, I just need to move. Now, we've shot quite a few squirrels, and they all count, but I'm convinced that there are still plenty more to be had here. So, as ever, I'm going to top the feeder back up again, ready to come back and have another go at them. You really can't beat feeding stations when it comes to keeping the grey menace in check. 
Next up, I'm taking a look at the fantastic new Ultra CLX from BSA Guns. British gun maker BSA makes some brilliant air guns and I've been really excited about getting my hands on the latest version of one of their most popular models. Now the BSA Ultra is one of the most successful pre-charged air guns of recent times. I've got an Ultra SE of my own, I've had it for about eight years and it has never let me down. Now this is the Ultra CLX. It's all new and it's had a complete overhaul but I'm pleased to say it's still made in Birmingham and it still looks and feels very much like the BSA Ultra that I know and love. CLX in Roman numerals is 160 and this year just happens to be the 160th anniversary of BSA guns. Now this Ultra CLX is something a little bit special because it's a first edition model. Now this version costs £799 and features a really nice walnut stock. It's limited to just a run of just 200 guns and they come with extras including a zoom scope and mounts, a BSA silencer and a hard plastic case. Now the standard CLX costs just £609 and it's exactly the same gun but with a beach stock. The stock is made by Minelli. It's recognisably ultra, just a little more up to date. It's ambidextrous and comes ready fitted with studs for bipod or sling attachment. It also has a really nice high pronounced cheek piece which ensures good alignment between your eye and the scope. The butt section is finished with a soft pad which feels really good in the shoulder. Now the contour of the pistol grip feels just right both in the way that it sits in your palm and the fact that it sets you up really nicely for the trigger. Now there are nice grippy patches of stippling on both sides of the pistol grip and the forend and this stock it just works making it a really nice little gun to shoot. The new Ultra remains as compact as ever. It weighs just 2.6 kilos unscoped and measures less than 82 centimetres from end to end with the supplied air stripper in place and obviously a little bit longer if you fit that silencer. Now just as I've come to expect from BSA's PCPs, the engineering and finish are absolutely flawless. Although a little bit boxy, the new monoblock chassis looks really sturdy and best of all, the magazine sits below the line of the dovetail rails so there's no chance of it getting in the way of your scope mounts. Now BSA have actually sent me this gun fitted with a one piece mount which certainly proves that point. That magazine is a brand new design and it increases shot capacity to 12 in 177 and 22 calibers. Pull the bolt all the way back and it simply pulls out from the left hand side. It's very easy to reload. All you do is push pellets in one at a time, nose first from the back, turning the inner drum to increase spring tension as you go. The magazine features a mechanism that makes it impossible to double load and it also has a small window that shows you the shot count, how many pellets you have left as you work your way through its payload. The magazine, which is colour coded red for 2.2 and blue for 177, is driven by a very sturdy but very smooth rear bolt action. Now that bolt is brilliantly designed to ensure a secure purchase and the mechanism works faultlessly to deliver fast shots one after another. It's great fun for rapid fire plinking and utterly dependable if you need a quick follow up shot in the field. I've always been impressed by BSA triggers. The one on my Ultra SE is brilliant and this one is even better. Better than on some guns costing three times as much. Now this unit is two stage and fully adjustable. You can even tweak the position and angle of the match type blade. Straight out of the box, this one was spot on. It's got a fairly deep first stage, which comes to a really clear stop before a very, very crisp second stage break. 
Another really neat new feature on the CLX is the new safety catch mechanism. Now the catch is positioned at the rear of the action. It's actually thoughtfully located at the front of the stock's thumb cradle, which means your thumb is already in place, ready to operate it. Now the catch is safe when it's upright and in the central position, and you simply thumb it down to the left when you're ready to shoot. Yet another advancement on the new Ultra is shot count. And this elegant little cylinder now holds enough air to return more than 60 shots in 177 caliber and over 70 in 22 from a full 232 bar fill. Now this air gun is producing a muzzle energy of around 11.5 foot pounds. Variation is within eight feet per second over a string of 10 shots. Now, remaining air reserves are clearly displayed on a gauge at the front of the cylinder. Now, I don't like having to look down from the muzzle to read the gauge, but I'm really pleased to say that this one has been designed with a wide field of view, so you can actually read it from more of a sideways angle. When it's time to refill the CLX, the task couldn't be easier. The collar at the front of the cylinder keeps grit and other grime away from the innards. Give that a turn to expose the inlet, push in the supplied probe and you're ready to fill. So that's the main features that you'll find on the new BSA Ultra CLX. Let's get to work on a target and I'll show you how they all come together. Well, I'll settle for that. Um, one thing that probably is really worth pointing out is that, as with the previous Ultra, the CLX has BSA's cold hammer forged barrel. And when you combine that with consistent power output, a pellet friendly magazine, and a really nice trigger, you're pretty much guaranteed good accuracy. Um, I also really have to say that the supplied silencer did a brilliant job of keeping this gun quiet. Now that's a, third, uh, sorry, a five shot group at 30 meters. And as you can probably see, we've got a bit of a crosswind, a crosswind today, but nonetheless, that group has got to be 10 millimeters from center to center. I'm certainly pleased with that. So that's the new Ultra CLX from BSA Guns. Now I know this is a limited edition model, but I still think it's hard to believe that you can get exactly the same gun, but with a beach stock for just over 600 pounds. That really is remarkable value for money. Now BSA has a knack for producing modern, accurate PCPs that somehow still manage to look and feel like classic sporting air guns, and this is certainly another one of them. So if you want a compact, handsome, and accurate air gun that can cut it in the field and on the range, this will do just that. And furthermore, it won't break the bank and if my BSAs are anything to go by, it will give years of brilliant service. Don't miss the award-winning Airgun Shooter magazine. It's packed with hunting features, reviews, tactics and insight to help you become an even more successful shooter. Get your copy today, in shops or online. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership.